G'day fellas and welcome to a very special edition of Bronze League Boomers. Spawning in over on the west side of the map, we've got Fatter, who is currently sitting at rank 12,827, if I'm reading that correctly. And, uh, and he is going to be going up the founder, the one and only, or the, the founder of EGC TV. It is Pesty. Uh, who is currently sitting at rank 9,296, and he's playing the Holy Roman Empire. And we are booming in the Bronze League, because these two guys, I got a sneaking suspicion that they are going to enjoy booming just a little bit. So we're going to be taking a look at everything that they do, getting a good idea of what's going down, what's happening, and uh, look, let's just be honest. I'll be honest with you guys. We might be a little bit mean to Pesty. We might be a little bit mean to Pesty. We might be a little rude to him, but that's okay. We are friends with him, uh, so he'll, I'm sure he won't mind. Uh, <laughs> Fatter, on the other hand, we don't know. So we're going to be looking at doing a combination of constructive criticism uh, as as well as, you know, making lighthearted jokes. And it, I, I want to remind people it's about fun. Uh, so that's really what, what it is. You know, we're, we're trying to have fun. And uh, at the end of the day, I know it, it might seem like we're doing it at other people's expense, but at the same time, we're trying to be educational as well. So I hope you guys understand that. But let's talk a little bit about this, what we've got, because already I see Pesty moving towards the middle of the map. I think he might doing a bit of, bit of a boat boom himself. Uh, and indeed he is. So dropping down the dock, very nice opening from Pesty. Uh, so a minute 35, not too bad here. So going to be focusing on just getting that in. And I got to, I got to, Compliment Pesty at this point in the game. He's looking pretty good. That's, this is a good opening. Five villagers on wood. More than enough to cover his boats. Uh, and then just a, a few villagers here on food. Heading out to gold quite early. But uh, I'm curious to see what his build order uh, includes. Uh, over on the other side though. Let's take a look at Fatter. So one of the things to note is you can see from Fatter. Uh, the way he's placed his gold mine here. So normally this would be referred to as a suboptimal uh, gold mine or mining camp and the reason why is because as you can see the outline of this mining camp actually goes for uh, This entire area here, which means that this this entire line your villagers can drop in resources to okay So what happens is when you reach the late game and you've got say another three villagers down here another four villagers down here They've got to walk extra distance to drop off their gold so what you would want to do is actually move that bad boy just over one more tile so you've got a complete connection so that you've got so you can see that line there you want to make sure that that is always fully connected and then that way you can have you know eight nine villages in here nice and snug always dropping off gold without having to move and that's the best way to do it uh so in that situation yeah i i would say a little bit of constructive criticism uh, but another another thing to note is that we've got a little bit of overgathering uh, with regard to our gold as well. So still not bad though. Everything is looking good at this stage. I mean, we're, we're talking bronze bronze league boomers, but these guys at the moment they're looking about silver league, so they shouldn't feel too bad about themselves. Um, there, my main concern is just that there's a bit of an overgather of of gold. But uh, we'll check in with Pesty. We'll see how he's doing is indeed making fishing boats uh isn't going to get housed either he's managed to remember his next house he's got five villages on gold so i think he might be saving up to make some jewelry uh because that is a lot of villages on gold gonna be moving the prelate out there as well is he thinking is he thinking about training something from his town center today let's have a look we're at three minutes and 35 when we notice how many seconds do you guys reckon it goes until pesty remembers that he's got a town center that he needs to train something at do, do you reckon he's he's taking a phone call I reckon he might have taken a phone call. He's walked away from the computer. And it, it could be a while before he gets back here. So al already we've been like, we've been 25 seconds into this. Still yet to train anything from the town center. He might be saving to age up. Maybe that's, oh, oh he's remembered. He's remembered. He's, he's remembered. All right. So he, <laughs> he has remembered to train a villager from the town center. Uh, and another interesting ha thing happening there for Pesty. Uh, we have got villagers uh, that have come all the way down to this position away from the prelate. And the reason why that has happened is because we haven't actually killed these sheep. So the way that the AI works is that it will look for the body or, or the carcass uh, of every animal or every every animal that uh you are oh that is an interesting uh movement an interesting path so if you've got a sheep that's dead here and a sheep that's dead here and a sheep that's dead here and you've got a whole bunch of live sheep that are right here it will go okay i'm gonna eat you and then i'm gonna eat you and then i'm gonna eat you and then it will finally go to the live sheep after that it will eat all of the carcasses before it eats any more live sheep so it's just important to remember to uh, make sure that your carcasses are readily available uh, to your villagers. Fada now reaching the feudal age. 
We'll check in over on Farda. Uh, but I, I will note that uh, this is not a bad Ark and Chapel coming out for Pesty here. Uh, so catching a lot of the wood line, catching the gold mine, also going to be catching the town center. So pretty decent here. Uh, and dropping down a barracks. So obviously he's playing up against the French. He knows what may potentially be coming. And uh, as a result, he looks to try and uh, and anticipate that. So now we see double. No oh my lord. Look at the look at the um, extent that we've got of... Uh, of of units or, or yeah units in the queue at this point in time uh so two royal knights and chivalry ready to go in the queue at the same time we've got wheelbarrow coming through um but uh interestingly no rally points coming out just yet looks like it's just going to be a manual uh rally so one of the things that you can do is you can actually grab your uh your landmark or, or your production building and right click it over here and that's going to send your unit out so what you could do in this situation is if if you know the enemy is over here you can say, all right, well, there's a gold mine. I'm just going to right click it to that gold mine. Um, and it uh, looks like now it's actually happened. So Fatter has rallied his units over towards the edge of the map here. So not a bad spot to rally them. And uh, is also going to be scouting out the fishing that's happening in the middle. Now, one of the things to note is that Pesty is actually on deep water fish. Uh, and so this is a very valuable source of food. You can see he's got, he's quite heavily on it as well. Eight, uh, eight fishing boats on this. So this is a massive threat. And if Fadder is going to play this right. He wants to shut this down as quickly as possible. There's a number of different ways that you could go about shutting this down. Number one is you can try and drop an outpost here. That's always a good option. Um, number two is that you can look to get up a dock yourself on the other side and then send out an attack boat. Uh, you can also go for a dock over here, just somewhere preferably that he doesn't have line of sight because it's that classic case of, you know, it, it picture like, you know, two cowboys out on the street. And one of them's already got their gun drawn and the other one's, you know, he, he wants to reach for his pocket, but he can't. If he reaches for his pocket, he's going to get shot in that time. And it's the exact same thing here. If you drop a dock right here, you are essentially reaching for your pocket. And Pesty is going to get himself out a, uh, a galley and he's just going to kill the villager before the dock even gets up. So it is important to remember that uh, you always want to try and drop that out of line of sight. But now Pesty starting to build up that mass of spearmen. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, at the incoming units that are coming through from Fatter. And uh, we can see that he is definitely looking to take out some villagers. He's got his eyes on them, doing a great job of scouting this out as well. Looks like he's up to 30 villagers at the moment, so not a bad job through for Fatter. He, he does know that Pesty's actually gone down towards this position. Spots out the villager. Looks like he's going to get a charge on it, and Pesty going to be paying for the villager with its life. So Spear's going to be moving around now for Pesty. We'll see exactly how he, how he looks to, to play it from here, but he's just going to go slowly. Just going to play it casually. Manages to actually pick up a Royal Knight. Very nice. I like that he sent the other villager. Like, he's literally just sent this villager out. And he's like, yep, this villager is fearless. I, I'm not too worried about this villager. It's not going to die. It will not die. Uh, but uh, doing a great job with the Arkham Chapel. Except for the fact... So, my fear is that this villager... Yeah, so... Pesty has, has put down his lumber camp. But he's put it down so that the villagers... It's only like maybe one or two villagers that are actually going to get buffed up when they drop off the wood. So you can see how this one's glowing. That one also managed to get through. But all of these ones, not going to be glowing. And the reason why you want them to glow is so that they get this little buff here. It enables them to gather faster. So what Pesty should have done in this situation is put his lumber camp right here. And then that would have enabled all of his villagers to chop through this. This is the most, this is the juiciest stuff. And then what you can do is you can actually make it so that your last lumber camp on here is right here uh, until you get to maybe like halfway through. And then you can just drop down a new one because uh, it's going to be more efficient for you to do that. But yeah, in this situation, Pesty making a little bit of a mistake. Going to be dropping down the age up though. Going with the Ragnitz Cathedral. So looking to stick it to the meta. He is, he is definitely watched enough Beastie Cutie Games to know that Regnitz Cathedral is a good landmark, Keck W. Um, but now back over towards the the uh, the base of Mr. Pesty. It looks like we've got a, a little bit of a siege happening and Fatter going to be attempting to take it down. But uh, back in, in Fatter's base, plenty of villagers on gold at this point in time. I don't know exactly what Fatter is up to, what he's thinking, what his game plan is. But a really important thing to remember is that typically in these matchups or in these games, you've got to come in having a game plan. And so if you're just playing and you're just kind of reacting and doing your thing, it can work. But at the same time, it's much more efficient if you're having a game plan. So there are times when you need to be reactive. So as an example, you might start off a game. I do like this rallying to the wall. He, he is very intent on rallying to the edge of the map. Everything is getting rallied to the edge of the map. 
You can see, like, this is his secret spot. Pesty will never know about this secret spot. Uh, now, you, you should have a plan. So, uh, as an example, we can see Fatter sitting at 10 minutes here. He, what was his plan? His plan is to make royal knights and to make archers and to put them on the edge of the map until they, they, they are a big blob. I'm, I'm going to assume that that is it. But he needs to adapt as well. So adapting is really important to an enemy, especially on a water map. So if you spot that your enemy is doing something like this, you need to adapt. That means that you need to be out here. You need to be looking to kill this, looking to counter it. And you can see that the, the scout's actually working its way down through the dock. So hopefully Pesty responds to that. Uh, but hopefully it's with a proportionate response. So you can see Pesty actually sending out nine of his spears here. Uh, when he knows that his enemy does have knights in the vicinity. Um, and so he's going to leave himself quite open. So I wouldn't be surprised if when Pesty moves in towards this. And he'll probably kill this scout. I don't think the reaction times of Fatter are probably going to be there to actually... Uh, to, yeah, to be able to pull that back in time. Uh, but it's going to leave a bit of an opening now. So Fada will, will should know that, well, all the spearmen are going over there to kill the, uh, the, uh, the scout at the dock. So maybe I can come and attack. And that's exactly what happens. Fada going to be attacking. So Pesty probably should have just sent the one spear. Would have been a little bit easier for him. But obviously he's got a defense force back here, ready to go. Men at arms, all upgraded. You can see them with their big shields out, ready to go. And now villagers going to be going down on the wood line. Fada definitely looking to clean up this position and uh, going to start sieging down that barracks as all good knights should do, siege down that barracks. And uh, now going to be looking to clean up the men at arms. There's a lot of men at arms here. Knights do very effectively against them. Uh, do we potentially head into the cinematic mode against these two guys? I think we are, ladies and gentlemen. We are going straight to the cinematic mode. Oh, isn't that beautiful? As the men at arms look to do a loop to loop around the, the knights now. Spears are going to be coming out and looking to chase away the knights. And the men at arms are going to be very happy that they waited to fight. Because uh, once those spears connect to the knights, it is going to be all she wrote for those knights. But uh, now managing to fall back towards Trusty Point up against the wall here. And now we see a little bit of a, a counterattack coming out now. A lot of archers here. They're not really firing off. Now going to be focusing down. He's doing a good job. Look at the micro. Micro coming in. He's focusing down the spears. Pesty's hyping something in the chat. I can hear it. I can hear it. Pesty probably raging at this point. You guys heard that little chat message that went off. That is exactly what this... Uh, what it is... Uh, you know, that, that is that is Pesty through and through. And Pesty gets cleaned up completely. He has got his tail between his legs at this point in time. He is scared. He is, he is fighting for his life right now. We take a look at the perspective of Pesty. You can see he's got a relic, but he's too scared to even get it in the Regnets at this point. He can't even get it in the Regnets because he's too scared. He's got no units now. So uh, uh, unfortunate timing here from Pesty. He's going to be trying to hold on, but now he's got to be careful. Prelate is here. Could potentially do a wall of lol if he wanted. Nope, nope. Pesty, unfortunately, misses out on that one. Men at Arms going to be looking to try and regroup towards the town center. He actually heads inside the town center and now going to be looking to, to try and fight off against these knights. You can see them doing a bit of a run around the barracks there and managing to make it actually inside. A couple of these knights doing great work, but archers on the back line doing five damage apiece versus the four, dam or four armor of the Men at Arms means that they are just going to be scratching them. And uh, once those men at arms manage to clean up that scout, I suspect they're going to be coming right for an archer dinner. Still yet to take that relic and, and put it inside the regnets. Uh, he's, he's actually got a prelate here ready to go. Now, one of the interesting things to note that Pesty has done, and I don't always recommend this, but your regnets cathedral, it is very effective at buffing up villages. So what... What's an example of that, Drongo? Okay, good question. So, villagers like, uh, you know, wood gatherers, uh, gold gatherers, um, farmers, also very good. And you can see that Pesty really hasn't left too much space for his farmers here. So, he's opted to put barracks around the Arkham Chapel. But I don't know whether he's read the tooltip, but it only it only inspires the villagers. It doesn't actually inspire barrackses. Barrackses? Barracks? Barrackses? I don't know what the plural of barracks is, but I feel like it's probably just barracks. Um, but he's up to eight barracks at this point in time. Um, but they're not going to be working any faster being around this Arkham Chapel. So I would have suggested to Pesty, hey, put those barracks just a little bit further away. Give yourself a bit of space here around that Arkham Chapel just so that your villagers can actually be buffed up by it in the late game. But uh, we'll take a look over at how Pesty's opponent is doing fatter on the other side. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. That is what we're talking about. That is some beautiful farms. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. You know, we, we called this Bronze League boomers at the beginning. These guys don't look Bronze League at all. Honestly, when I see farms like that, this is silver. 
This is silver at least. These guys are, are actually not, not terrible. Not bad at all. Uh, it is impressive to see just, you know, the, the level that's coming out. But this is a classic. This is a classic Bronze League move. Uh, so what do we have here? We've got a, a player that has decided to, to chop. I, I would say, I would estimate 63% of the forest and is now finally putting down a second lumber camp. Uh, so a little bit of a long distance mine. So, uh, or a long distance chop. So the general rule that you can almost always follow is... <laughs> Pesty. Pesty puts a house down in front of his villagers that are gathering the wood so they have to walk extra far around the house to drop off at the lumber camp. Oh, Pesty. Oh, Pesty, you're so sweet. You're so sweet. But now Meta Arb's mass building up. Huge amount. Pesty doing a little bit of the walk past, not bothering to hit the knights here. He's just going to walk through. Uh, and... Uh, in, in this position, it, it seems like Pesty actually doing quite well. i got to be real with you guys. Fatter might be in a bit of trouble here. There's a lot of men at arms out. Not a lot of them going to be hitting, though. Th they did seem more intent on, you know, just... They had hands on each other's backs. It was that sort of thing. But uh, men at arms now going to be coming out for Pesty. He's looking pretty strong at this point in time. I don't know if this is going to be stopped. That's 29 men at arms from a Holy Roman Empire player with a fishing economy and relics. And we're talking, you know, not just one, not just two relics, but a third relic also... Maybe coming in soon. Uh, <laughs> Prelate has decided to run back to base without its relic. Um, yeah, so the general rule for putting your lumber camps down is if you can fit a lumber camp in without actually going over a tree. So you can see right here that there are tree stumps. So there's, it, it's very difficult. It's very deceiving. But once a tree gets chopped, it looks like this. And then there is a point where that tree still has wood in it. So you can see here, these trees have still got wood in them. Uh, so as long as you have chopped down all those trees and you're not going to crush any of the ones that have fallen down and they've still got wood in them, then you can put down that second or that next lumber camp. But uh, now it looks like Pesty has decided he's going to come back out for this third relic. He wants to get it. There are two more relics towards the north of the map. Uh, we'll take a look and see whether he's scouted them out. Doesn't look like he's scouted that one out. Has he scouted this one out? He does know where that one is. Uh, but he's going to finally pick up that third relic now. He's in a decent spot. Uh, he's reached 110 population. He's almost double his enemy at this point in time. But Fada, he has got the farms. Look at this. Fada is farming like an absolute madman at this point. Take a look at that. That is just absolute gorgeous stuff. I love to see it. When you, when you see farms like this, you just know it's... it's You know, Fada is, is definitely an up-and-coming player because these, these are some good farms. These are some good farms. I'll give him that. But uh, we'll take a look now back over at the base of Pesty. We'll see exactly what he's up to. Looks like he's just dropping down some more houses. Just a few. 180 population. Just a few. Just a few houses. But um, the, the main issue with these farms, for anybody wondering, or anyone playing along at home, is, is look, these are okay farms. But the problem is, the further you get away from these farms, the more distance you're going to be traveling. So as an example, let's take a look at this villager here. You can see this is actually one, two, three farms out. So this villager, when it return, when it comes to this farm, it's going to have to walk extra far compared to this villager who is just at point blank range. You can see everybody in the first ring is going to be very happy. And you might be thinking, oh, well, Drongo, he's saving wood because he's only built one, one uh, mill. And, you know, like he, he's added in a whole bunch of farms around it. So he's saving, you know, saving wood. Well, that's true. But uh, remember, he's also playing France, which get cheaper mills. Um, and it's also just incredibly ineffective. So my advice to you is if you're looking to place down some farms, what you want to do is place a mill down and then look to place eight farms around it. And that is the best way you can do it. Uh, so don't try and ignore going for like this kind of mass farm shenanigan here. Um, and instead just try and do, you know, one mill, eight farms, one mill, eight farms. You know, you've seen two girls, one cup. It's the same sort of thing. Two girls, one cup, eight mills, or eight farms. <laughs> oh, no. Eight, eight mills, one farm. Eight mills, one farm. A beautiful seaside guild hall coming in right now uh, from from our, our French player. Look at this. Look at this. You know, I'm actually reminiscing about a song. You want to go to the seaside? I think that's, I think that's how the song goes. But uh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful spot right there. Um, but uh, now Pesty deciding that it's time to take his enemy to the ram ranch uh that is correct we are going to the ranch we're taking everybody there there's going to be 16 of us we're going in the back of the ram and uh we're going to have a great time and then once we're finished we're going to go to the showers so he's doing quite the ram dance you can see 
Does he build another ram? Was that it? Do, is it just going to be the six ram combo that he's coming in with today? Uh, it, it could be. It could be the six ram combo. We'll see what he's going for. He's also got 2,300 gold stacked up in the bank. Oh, 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 oh. Nope. <laughs> the, the Rams, nope. They were too scary. Pesty now going to be looking to call in reinforcements. You can see he's actually heading up the front. There's a lot of units out here for him, uh, but going to be looking to clean up his enemy. And uh, we can see the battering rams beginning to move in down towards that south of position. And uh, at the same time, we can see the spears. Look at the surround that's coming through. They all managed to get down on the ground. The men at arms are going to be chasing through. Now, the hot tip number one. Uh, don't... <laughs> Vesti, what are you doing? you got to command your units to attack, my friend. Don't move them. Uh, so make sure you attack move your units, but attack move them on the ground. Don't attack a unit. If you attack a unit, they're just all going to run to that unit. But Landmark going down. Take a look how fast this Landmark is going down. Pesty doing an absolute cleanup. You guys are going to have to call service 30. We're going to need a cleanup in the base of Fatter because this is not looking pretty. Landmark number one goes down to remain. He's got that bad boy on gold, but I tell you what, he's going to need more than gold to save his chances here. He's going to need religion. He's probably going to need a prayer, probably even thoughts at this point, but now village is going to get pulled. You can see them pull Pulling out their fire despite having wheat in their hand. Extra dangerous. It's kind of like throwing a Molotov cocktail, except there's wheat involved, and that's never a good concoction. But uh, now Men at Arms are going to be looking to defend their, their brethren uh, that are still stuck in the rams at this point. And it looks like Pesty might actually come out victorious here. He has completely destroyed the army of the enemy, and indeed he does, ladies and gentlemen. There is your Bronze League Boomer coming out to win this game victoriously and in style. And i got to be honest with you. It wasn't terrible. It was a pretty decent game. I'll be real with you guys. I, I didn't think it was that bad at all. Fada did pretty well. I liked the way that he rallied his units to the edge of the map. Pesty didn't do too badly either. It was a nice little boom that came out from Pesty. So very well played to him. Uh, and, uh, and I mean, at the end of that, I would just like to finalize that by saying, make sure you check out the Golden League. He won't be playing in it, but he'll definitely be, uh, be hosting it. It's Pesty. It's EGC TV. It's the Golden League. And it's this weekend. I'll catch you guys in the next one.